The governor said last week that she said she still supports the switch, but she said that we made mistakes in implementing it and that we need to do better. What do you see as the most pressing needs to do better? Well, I think that, you know, from my goal, as I said earlier, is to, is to ensure we have a sustainable program to provide services to our members. So I'm not going to focus on mistakes that may or may have not occurred in the past. I want to focus on the future and how we move forward. So I want to understand what the issues and challenges are now for not only the providers but the members and identify those issues and resolutions for those and so we can move forward with that. I think there's always in any Medicaid program that there are opportunities for doing things differently. There are different ways of doing all kinds of, um, whether it's looking at cost avoidance or looking at efficiencies in a program or looking at program integrity efforts. There's just different ways to do things in any Medicaid program. As a Medicaid director, I'll hear, and you may have heard this too, if you've seen one Medicaid program, you've seen one Medicaid mm -hmm. program. They're all unique. But you, you don't see anything specific you need to fix right now, get right on it. Well, I think right now, specific, well, I want to make sure that, as you talked about, if there is a significant challenge with providers being paid, paid timely, I think that there have been efforts to address that. So I th my understanding is on, that the current processing of claims is, is working. There may be some opportunities with past uh, old claims and some accounts receivable balances, so I need to identify and understand that. So certainly want to make sure that that is moving forward in a positive way. I want to make sure we have the adequacy of a network. You know, there are some concerns I have relative to choice. I have to deal with, you know, my first month here, so I'm dealing with the exit of, of one MCO and the transition of more than 218,000 to another MCO. Um, working with Amerigroup to ensure that they can build that capacity so at some point in the very near future they can start taking those members that are on fee-for-service. You know, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services are not going to allow us to continue that uh, assignment to fee-for-service forever because sure. they want the members to have choice. So those are some of the things that I need to address immediately and we move forward with this.